joined today by the Bishop T.D. Jakes, uh, talking about this horrendous tragedy that really has uh, hit us hard, uh, not just in Dallas. As a matter of fact, not just uh, around the country, but all over the world we're starting to hear from people. Uh, Bishop, you see a lot of people with a lot of pain. Have you ever experienced something like this, what we're having right now? I think this is very new and it's very uncomfortable. Whenever you have to deal with subjects like race or racism, I think it becomes very uncomfortable. We, we live in our silos and remain oblivious to what other people are going through. You know, we had a, a special prayer service today at which uh, you uh, gave a message. And one of the things that you talked about uh, was the fact that we make the mistake of believing that if someone's pain takes happens in another city, mm -hmm. that it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with us. If it happens in, in Ferguson, if it happens uh, in, in, in Minnesota, that we're so far away from that that really have, we have no connection to that at all, and that's not the case. That is really the problem in our country right now. We have shirked the responsibility of understanding that we are, in fact, our brother's keeper that we do bear some responsibility for people not only who look like us, but people who don't look or dress or act like us, that we have to have a new understanding of brotherhood in our country. There is this sense of anger that uh, y you, you hear nowadays. The problems have been with us for, for quite some time. People have worked on them for quite some time, but now, uh, and maybe it's because of social media or through social media, people don't no longer have discussions or conversations. They seem to just be shouting. They're shouting because I think they're frustrated. You see it in uh, our electoral process. Everybody's frustrated. They're frustrated because they waited on those people who in power to make decisions that never got made. And uh, good judgment and good leadership has gotten sequestered. And in so doing, it has left people who have no voice frustrated to the point that uh, there's violence and even when there's not physical horrific violence like what we've seen in Dallas there's emotional violence and trauma even in families and households that are results of situations where people are left behind economically educationally uh, criminal justice has a part to play in this whole process and the young people are rising up feeling like they have no hope I is this a problem that will be limited to America, or do you think that we will see this spread around the world? I think we have already seen it spread around the world. We're seeing unrest all over the world, from Saudi Arabia to Iraq and Iran, Afghanistan. It's just that now it has come to our doorstep. This sense of tribalism and ethnos against ethnos, uh, uh, ethnicities, fighting ethnicities, is, is not just in America alone, it reaches all over the world. We have avoided it up to this point. And now if we, we're right on the precipice of making a change one way or the other. And depending on how our leadership emerges, not just presidential, but in every aspect of government, and how willing they are to take on the issues that are not even being talked about in the electoral process, if we don't start dealing with the issues, I'm afraid we're gonna lose control of, of this precious country. What do you think, uh, th this young man, obviously we do not know the specifics of uh, his, his history, that sort of thing, the, the, the gunman in this case, uh, but what is it that would allow the anger to boil up so much that it would, it would uh, exhibit itself this way? You know, I'm reluctant to speak about him because I don't know him or his family or anything about him, but in the young people I see today, there is a frustration and uh, a feeling of uh, not being able to achieve their goals. Uh, I understand that he related to uh, the stories that have been in our headlines happening across the country uh, in Baton Rouge and Milwaukee. And I think there is a solidarity coming up through social media in part with these issues where other fr beds of frustration are erupting as a result of the provocation of what they see in the news and the headlines and social media. So let's talk about the future if we can and uh, how to move forward from here. Because I know that one of the things that you expressed concern about was that, yes, everybody is concerned, they're focused today, but next week they might all forget and we can't allow that to happen. We have seen it happen over and over again. And I think it is because good ideas come to birth, but then they uh, die quickly. And they die quickly because they are jammed into political systems that are not designed for change. Uh, the status quo and the red tape really squashes, asphyxiate the dreams of people who have worked really hard to bring about changes until we clear the line and open up the doors so that all people can have equal access. We're going to see these eruptions regardless of the color of their skin. None of us want to see the horrific events that we saw here in Dallas. It's devastating. It's traumatizing. My heart goes out to the police officers who are really doing their job every day. 
And while I stand in solidarity with them, that does not mean that those who are questionable should not be held accountable. Yet in this country, we have a tendency to think that you're either with one side or the other. We shouldn't be with sides. We should be for what is right, not Republican or Democrat. What is right? Not uh, I'm standing with the police officers or I'm standing with the street crime. In each case individually, let's look at what is right and when it is wrong, not just the people who look like the victim, all people should speak against it or we lose credibility. What do you think, um, I've heard you mention frustration. Uh, I've heard you mention um, anxiety and angst am among young people. What is it that the individual can do beginning today to try to, in, in some form or fashion, uh, move in a positive way to make some change? I think it begins in the home, first of all. I think we have a responsibility to raise our children with hope and with an eye that is keenly aware of what is going on in their hearts and lives. Parents are so busy today that young people have nobody to talk to but each other. And when the only wisdom you get is from somebody who has only lived as long as you are, that wisdom is often misguided. So I think it comes to roost at the bedside of our parents. And then our school systems, we really need to create educational opportunities where people are able to think on the level that will cause them to avoid uh, taking their frustration out in this manner. Because when you can speak effectively, you don't have to express yourself in rage and violence because you are in fact articulate. Those simple basic things that our parents taught us as values have, have become remiss in our society in a way that is to our detriment. You mentioned uh, hope and hopelessness. Uh, that seems to be a phrase as something that we hear a lot with regard to frustration. I think that any time, uh, the Bible said hope that is deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. So you, you see all of these promises, you hear all these campaign speeches, you watch on television, you see how other people live, but if that hope is deferred long enough, it makes the heart sick. And sick hearts grab guns and kill police officers. Sick hearts grab guns and shoot victims that you've already apprehended. This sickness is not just in black or white or blue or green. It is without discrimination. It will touch any uh, level of life. And I think we have to look for that sickness. And when you see something, say something. The police officers uh, who we lost here in Dallas uh, last night, uh, Perhaps uh, so, some word for their families, uh, the families that are left behind, uh, what the rest of us can do to encourage them. Well, I got on the phone this morning and I called uh, Judge Jenkins and I said, anything that the Potter's House has, you can have. I open up my building, my facilities. We've opened up our counseling services, not only to the families, but to the other police officers who themselves are traumatized to do what we can. And other churches are stepping up to the plate and I'm proud of that. I think all of us should go out of our way to be a little bit more kind to people that we work with, that we see walking down the street, because the reality is this kind of trauma has hit us all. To the families, healing is a slow process. Give yourself some time. Give yourself the right to grieve, to go through the uh, whole cadre of emotions that are associated with grief recovery, ang denial and anger and all of those sorts of things before you get to acceptance. And in that process, we pray with you and, and we sit with you and we grieve with you because we know that we are not far away from being in the same seat that you sit in today. It's not going to be enough to think that uh, we can fix this in 48 hours or 48 days or even 48 weeks. No, these are systemic issues that are, and, and I think we have a tendency to think that if we, uh, if we incarcerate the perpetrator or, or, or if we do this or do that, or if we change the president or if we do this or the other, we're gonna fix it. But I keep telling people, it doesn't matter how many times you change the chef, if the oven is broke, you're still gonna have a problem. We have systems that are dysfunctional and we need to stop and actually fix them. I know that you have, uh, 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 your program is getting ready to come back on. We're, looking, we're excited about it. Thank uh, you. The, the issues that you like to deal with in the program uh, seem to be issues like we're talking about, about hope, hopelessness, about frustration, about the future, about young people, about the, about the family. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm a builder. I'm an uplifter. I'm an encourager. I, I want to do a show about empowerment. I want people to be able to turn on their TV set without having to buy a ticket to a movie or a book from a bookshelf and get just a, a shot of hope and adrenaline, maybe a key that will unlock a door in a conversation you're trying to have with your child or your husband. I want to be uh, conciliatory. There are so many voices that are dividing us. I want to be a voice that unites us. 
Final question, um, again, a word uh, that we might be able to take away with us uh, in this very difficult moment. When we see how quickly we can lose a life, if there be any good thing to come out of it, it is this. If you love someone, tell them. If you miss them, show them. If you get in your mind to speak to them, do it now because life is so precious and none of us are sure that we have tomorrow to gamble on. Bishop T.D. Jakes, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.